but I've known business owners in the past that have reported lower annual salaries to avoid taxes, but guess where it bit them in the butt? Welcome to our podcast, It's About Payroll. We're your hosts, Brian Escobar and Walter William Duncan III. Whether you're new to the payroll game or a seasoned veteran, we have something for you. Welcome back, folks. This is take two of episode 99. This is a true payroll crime. What's up, Walt? How you doing today, sir? It's for the 99, sir. So it's good, man. I'm good. Blessed. And That's what's up. just happy to be here, man. Excited for this particular true payroll crime story because yeah. it's a throwback. No doubt. Whatever. So I'm looking forward to it, man. Yeah, very nostalgic. I'm good, man. I'm good. Other than these technical difficulties, we had, we, this is our take two. We usually never have to do any take twos or multiples or whatever, but we have some tech issues today. But uh, yeah, hopefully the payroll, the payroll gods hear me. The, we're so used to saying the payroll gods, the podcast gods yes. will uh, bless us with yes. a good show, yes. two yes. shows. Yeah. yeah, we both of them, we need exactly. Before we get into it, we have payroll news to share. My story is about a company named Merkins, and they are a global leader in payroll technology, providing enterprise businesses and HCM providers with an innovative solution for global payroll processing. Their product is called G2N, G, the letter G, the number two, and the letter N, Nova. G2N Nova enables gross to net calculations across various legislations, aka countries, districts, municipalities localities and they have a few features that i thought were really awesome let's see what a, what's one of them g2n nova utilizes a stateless application architecture to enable anonymous payroll processing this is very interesting okay ensuring that no sensitive personal identifiable inf- information you hear us talking about pp no not ppi pii all the time all the acronyms get confused, but PII, very sacred. It's the, it's a hacker's dream. It's a, right. The true crime and then the cybersecurity, all that. So anyway, they have stateless application architecture to enable anonymous payroll processing, ensuring that no sensitive PII is passed from clients to application. I don't even know how this would work. Like this, wow. this is what got me in this article. Like, how do you wish? And I do know how it would work. It's just, it's so progressive. It's, we need it because everybody that's it's such a sensitive topic with data and i'm really sad to say that folks still have not caught up with how sensitive data and how careless we're being with data so that was a huge call out another one let's see what else they got unprecedented accuracy well we'll see g2n nova is the only payroll engine capable of generating 100 percent accurate gross to net calculations for over 100 countries through a single native platform in real time without assessing or storing identifiable employee information. Okay, I'm going to poke some holes in here, but yes, that is a great feature. It's not unprecedented accuracy because payroll's number one goal is accuracy. So everybody can do gross and net accuracy calculations. The call out for this one is that it's doing it for 100, over 100 countries. Now that what we've learned through payroll talking to global payroll is that there is no one engine that can do every single country. They just haven't built it all in. They haven't created one. And I don't know what the the challenges are. Who knows? Too many countries to not enough payroll out of those countries. Who knows? But it's a big call out. Awesome. Let's see. Data privacy compliance. The stateless app architecture eliminates concerns regarding data breaches and ransom attacks by ensuring that the client's PII never leaves their data centers. And payroll-related information used by G2 and Nova is anonymized. Anonymized. That's, I've never heard, said that word. All right. Say it again. Anonymized. Is that a word? Anonymous. Anonymized. Anonymous. It's anonymous. anonymous. All right, there. What else we got? The continuous calculation feature. The upgrade induces introduces a continuous calc feature. That provides a real-time net pay updates for employees, eliminating the need for multi-step payroll processing cycles and enabling access to gross to net values in real time. 
So that's going to come into handy because that's where we're trending, right? We're talking about, we just talked about it in our real job all over the week. And basically the reason why companies like to do that is because the movement to, what is it called? Earned wage access. And this is employees can get access to their wages in real time. Whatever the company allows, they can go and get their money. Another cool feature, and I, what I'm excited to learn more about, is blockchain integration. The new version of G2N Nova lays the foundation for incorporating blockchain technology into payroll processes. It allows for tamper-proof verification of payroll calculations and payments in real time. That's ex- that yes. keeps in real in real time. Real, real time, time. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because yeah. yes. that's where we're we going with a, it all. We just had a demo. Uh, don't say it yep and and they used in real time but so that's what i'm saying that's where it's trending right that's where it's trending in the yeah and again folks the real time urgency is so that earned wage access is applicable is available we want our employees to be well some folks i think it's arguable i think we should talk about that right duh we can do a show on real time or not real time is it applicable for every industry is it applicable for all employees who, I don't know, right? We don't know. It's a good yeah. conversation. The last one, G2N Nova, global reach. G2N Nova offers global gross to net payroll processing capabilities across 100 plus countries, it says, making it the most advanced native payroll engine available. Arguably, it can be used as a standalone platform or integrated with major HCM or workforce managers software solutions. So cool. Right. Shout out to Merkins. Yeah. I'm also talking to a representative over there. We're trying to do like a collab on some content and payroll stuff. Merkins is doing their thing. Shout out to Merkins. I'm, I love to see it and I'm here for it. What do you got for us, Walt? So the article I have is from a, a site called fastcompany.com. And it's talking about five laws that may change the way we work in 2024 and beyond. Ooh. So the first law is sealing criminal records. So several states are implementing clean slate laws automatically seal the criminal records of individuals who have remained conviction free for a specific period. New York became the first state to enact such a law. Oh wow. Others like Utah and Pennsylvania. States like Connecticut, Delaware, and Colorado are set to begin sealing records potentially impacting millions of individuals and enabling a greater workforce participation. I wonder, well, it did it, I don't know if you remember in the article, did it say what, are there any restrictions? So does that mean folks with felonies? So um, people with felonies, man. With it said felonies. that in the article? Oh, that's and big they, because. And they have remained conviction free for a specific period. Oh. Okay, okay. After, okay, because that's a, unfortunately, I know some felonious people and, and it's, it, it is, man, like that kind of the talk is over. Oh man, you got that F and dang, you don't have a hard time finding a job. Blah, blah. You got to start your own business. You got to get your own. Cr- Construction become, business. Don't listen to us guys. Don't listen to us. We just cutting up this morning. Um, all right, go ahead, man. Go ahead. My bad. All right. The second law is mean marijuana drug testing so with the legalization of recreational marijuana in many states lawmakers are revisiting workplace drug testing policies new york and minnesota have passed laws prohibiting all marijuana testing for job against and current employees with similar le- legislation planned in california and washington so that's that's a good one because I'm in a medical state. You're in a recreational state. Like mm-hmm. it, it becomes. I've thought about that a lot. So that's meaning because it's oh that's unfair. And we've had those conversations in HR. Yeah. Like how do we do this? Being that it's and the way to do it, you should say in your handbook, "Hey guys, you can't do it at work." <laughs> yes, it's medical. Sure, it's recreational. But that does not get, just like you can't drink alcohol at work and come to work drunk. It's the same thing. HR payroll folks, when you guys are faced with these questions and conversations, it's, that's the fix. You just can't do it at work, folks. Like, come on. Don't go outside. Don't know. Oh my gosh. My, had some friends over last weekend and they're in the medical industry. And I don't want to put too much stuff on blast. 
but they were telling me a horror, like a coworker horror story. And the coworker was going out on lunch break and smoking, like coming back in smelling crazy. And what is wrong all, with you? Eyes all over. Yeah. Low and red. Like you hungry as hell now. Come on. You can't. Just laugh. Folks, take like how you do anything is how you do everything. How you do everything is how you do anything. Yes. Take your job seriously, man. Like, I like, come yeah, on, man, get. That's, that's yeah, called, that's, 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 that's recreation. Called, that's, that's, that's that's why it's called recreational. Yes, yes. Outside, like, outside even if it's world. medical, if it's then you gotta that's talk it. to your doc. Like, that that you can't. You know what I'm saying, folks? Be intentional. Be serious that's about. Your, I'm sorry, bro. Go ahead, man. No, be yeah. mindful. You're giving people yeah. like great pointers because if you know that, especially there's a saying called high functioning, right? People yes. smoke and still be high functioning. Sure. Or whatever. If yeah. you're not a high functioning person and you partake in this stuff, do that and you home. go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> you can sleep at that home work. Be yeah. at the desk. Sleeping. What's wrong with Brian? Bunch of chips, food <laughs> around. Food. Got all the food. food. Oh, man. So, all right. All right. Number all right. three. Get number on. Number three. Boy. Another law that's going potentially change the way we work in 2024 and beyond is increasing pay transparency. Oh, Lord. Trade Here we go. Pay Here we go. Legislation is gaining momentum, requiring employers to disclose salary ranges during patients. States like New York, California, Washington, and Colorado have implemented or are planning such laws with Massachusetts recently passing its own version. So that's out there. That's one of your favorite topics. And I just want to, yeah, I just want to leave my word here. Every time we talk about trans pay, transparency to payroll professionals, it's about the gross, not about the net. That's it. That's what we're going to say. Ooh, I'm going to make a t-shirt. Pay transparency. It's about the gross, not the, not about the net. Yeah. Let's do it, sir. Do yes. It. Number four, restricting non-compete agreements. Non-compete getting, agreements, getting long and controversial, are facing yep. increased scrutiny and yep. regulation. States right. like California, Oklahoma, and North Dakota have already restricted their use, Good. while the FTC proposed a rule to effectively ban them nationwide. Good. Minnesota and, and New York are among the states enacting laws targeting non-compete. Mm. And if I may... Why non-compete agreements, folks, think about it. If you have a payroll job and then you get fired or you quit and you sign the non-compete, it, it almost says you can't go and work payroll somewhere else for the competitor. Are you crazy? I got to make a living. I got to go do payrolls for someone else. And if it's a you competing... You secrets over there. <laughs> that's different. That's an NDA. That's an NDA. Non-compete means you can't go work in the same thing, doing the same thing for the same, like, mm -hmm. competitor company, Right. So an NDA would be fine if you have trade secrets. You do the NDA, not the non-compete. The reason I said that was because I worked for a place as a temp employee, and they had their employees sign non-compete agreements. Mm. And but they were like NDAs, ah, like okay, and process because it basically the processes that we use, the strategies that we use, you cannot take them another workplace interesting okay good call out yeah interesting number five enacting paid leave benefits states are taking the lead and implementing paid leave policies particularly in response to the COVID 19 pandemic 13 states along with washington dc have passed paid family leave laws with many also adopting paid sick leave Colorado and Minnesota are among the states implementing paid family leave with other states like Illinois providing paid leave for various purposes. These laws collectively reflect the ongoing shifts in labor policies, addressing issues such as criminal justice reform, yes. policy, workplace yes. transparency, employee contract, employment contracts, and worker. Yes. Yeah. And we need it, man. We need these reforms because the, some of these laws and stuff were made in like 1900. It wasn't applicable to where we are now. <laughs> Technology, like things like, I mean, it, yeah, it's much needed. Yeah. Thank you for that. Sir, That's dope, now, man. On to the nitty gritty. Yeah, this true payroll crime. This episode is presented by Time Track Go. 
the Simply Better employee time clock software that is going to make your life easier. In addition to the unique graphical employee time card that helps you quickly identify and fix mistakes, TimeTrack Go is excited to announce it's now compatible with QuickBooks Desktop, providing effortless data transfer and reduced errors. TimeTrack Go will not only save you time and money each week, but the easy to understand user interface and the ability to turn a tablet into a time clock will get you and your team up and going in just minutes. Find out what a simply better solution can do for your business. To learn more and sign up for your 14 day free trial, go to www.timetrackgo.com. That's www.time. T-R-A-K go.com or you can call 888-321-9922 that's 888-321-9922 let's go yeah man so I think we have a fun story today um something that Brian is familiar with yeah. I've seen clips of this and we're gonna drop I used to shop in the store episode, you know what I'm saying so it's about Crazy Eddie Electronics. Yes. Known for its low prices and zany commercials yeah. that, gained, that gained infamy and committing one of the largest frauds in U.S. history over 18 years. Wow. The Antar family, particular, particularly Eddie and Sammy, orchestrated a scheme that involves skimming cash sales to avoid taxes. Under under the table payments to managers and the manipulation of companies' financials. Sammy, accounting graduate, came to CFO, providing legitimacy and, cr- and crucial knowledge to sustain the fraud. Okay. So I went, so he went to school so he could defraud. So you learn how to defraud better, yep. All right, so in 1980, the family aimed to go public, employing tactics such as reducing skimming to show profit growth and boost the company's image. They successfully went public in 1984, selling 1.7 million shares at $8 each. Later, the Antars devised a plan called Panama Pump, laundering skin money through offshore accounts to inflate Crazy Eddie's revenues and profits. Facing exposure, yeah, facing exposure, Eddie cashed in millions of dollars in stock and resigned in 1986. The new management in 1987 discovered a $40 million inventory shortfall, which triggered investigations by the FBI, the IRS, and the SEC. In 1989, Sammy, the CFO, cooperated with authorities, revealing the extent of the fraud and leading to multiple charges. So it seems like... like Turn on his brother. Dang. See? Eddie's, See how money does people? He fled the country, but was eventually extradited, serving seven years in prison. Sammy now assists law enforcement in detecting white collar crimes, <laughs> emphasizing Dang. that their motivation was not solely about money, but the thrill of the game. Oh, Lord. Wow. So he That's crazy. Crime, but he got a job with the, the government. <laughs> but it makes me think about that movie, Catch Me If You Can. Yes. And back in the day, that dude, it was with Leonardo DiCaprio, and he was, but it was back in like the 70s and whatnot. And he was just writing checks and kiting checks, and they couldn't catch him. It was a good, it was one of my favorite, my, well, my wife hates it, but it's one of my favorite movies. <laughs> and yes, Crazy Eddie, I was, I grew up in New York in the 80s, and this was, I, I was there once a week. Like, my moms used to come buy me an Atari game every payday, or maybe once every two weeks. Payday, Atari game, boom, we was in Crazy Eddie. And yeah, it was just like, I didn't realize that it wasn't a nationwide company until I moved out of New York and we started talking about Crazy Eddie. And they're like, who? Like, were you? You were like, who? Uh, Walt was in Germany at this time. So he's a few years younger and also not in the country at the time. So yeah, he definitely yeah. missed it. But, uh, but again, it was very regional. I think they were only New York, New Jersey area. But yeah, we, we're going to drop the commercial in the final show so you guys will hear it. But he did crazy commercials, crazy Eddie, so stuff like that and very animated. But uh, yeah, man, it, it was like a staple institution in New York in the 80s, like how Best there, Buy right? is now. 
Yeah, I was there every two weeks. We got right. like, that's why I got my Atari games. <laughs> yep. Wow. So yeah, I know I mentioned some of the I already mentioned some of the key takeaways, but we're gonna go through those again really quick. And yeah. then we're gonna go, go over some potential solutions or things that could have helped in this case. Prevent right? preventative measures, yeah, absolutely. Yes. And for how it ties the payroll or finance is three because of how much things that we're doing that involve taxes. There was a C- CFO involved. So like those different things like are in this article. So what was the first key takeaway? Their skimming scheme. The Antars implemented a skimming, skimming scheme 10 times fast from the company's <laughs> inception involving the under table, under the table cash payments and low reported salaries to reduce costs and taxes. So, I uh, read that again, though, right? So let me read it again. Under the table cash frames and low reported salaries to reduce costs and taxes. So they're probably yes. paying people one thing, but they they were writing down another. I didn't know someone who, I don't think, I don't think they work there anymore, but they used to work for a place. It's the same thing that their boss. That's was crazy. That's nuts. Yes. Yeah. That and is nuts. I told nuts. them, I said, I, Oh, <laughs> yes. I remember the story. Now you told me, yes, yeah, I remember. Right. That's, yeah. That's, you get some of your legal. pay under the table. Mm-hmm. We're going to report this much, but I'm going to pay you this much. Oh man. And, I, and look that not only that, that doesn't only happen to employees in this situation, but I've known business owners in the past that have reported lower annual salaries to avoid taxes. But guess where it bit them in the butt? When you go and buy a, try to go buy a house, and when you try to go do something credit wise, you don't make enough money. You've now put yourself in a place where you can't leverage your money because you've been reporting that you only make twenty five thousand dollars for in a year to avoid taxes. But you should have been reporting your actual wages so that you know you got to take the hit. Like folks, so think what is it like a penny wise and a dollar foolish? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you got to be careful with these little payroll schemes. You guys think, yeah. your folks think they're getting away with stuff, and you're not. You're just hurting See, yourself. And speaking to the employees that may be in this situation, if you're in a situation, the employee may not think about it, right? Because they're not really, mm-hmm. they're adhering to the company's policies, right? If there <laughs> are any in place. But see, it's the owners and the officers of the business that should know the law. So the employees yep. might think, oh, my boss is cool. They're hooking me up. They're hooking me. No. You know, they're hooking me up. No. Potentially, it, like, setting you up for a, for you not to have a job and you have to start it all over again. And not only that, Walt, think about this. If I'm making, okay, I'm this employee that they're doing this scheme to, right? And I'm making 100 grand. They're giving me 60 on the books and 40 off the books. Holy crap, cash. You're loving it. Holy, you're getting this stack every fucking, every time you... Love it. But guess what? Let's say that company's eventually going to go out of business, right? They're going to, something's going to happen because how you do everything, how you do anything, that's going to come back to them. So now you need a new job and shoot, I'm a, I want to make 125 because I was just making 100. No, you wasn't. On the books, you were making 60. So guess what? You're going to make 70, 80 now on the books as a jump. You, you hurt, you, you're hurting yourself. You see what I'm saying? You're hurting yourself. So, there's ways to avoid taxes legally. That is what you need to learn. That is what we need to learn, right? Those are the conversations that we need to have. Tax shelters, avoidance, tax avoidance. What do I do to avoid? Not evade. Don't evade. Evade is illegal. Avoid is legal. Yeah, so that on the shirt too. Thank you. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Shout out to Bill Manning. Rest in peace. Number two is IPO manipulation. Tried to go public in 1984. Crazy Eddie. Gradually reduce the skimming, showing to show more profit growth and to attract investors. The IPOs raised significant funds for the family. So it was all part of the scheme. Hey, wow. So we'll calm down a little bit. We'll cut it in half. So yeah. we won't skim as much. So we won't steal as growth. much. We show a little growth. And so we can get some of these investors' money and take from them too. And then third one was the Panama. The plan, the family devised the plan to launder money through offshore accounts, inflating revenues and the profits to maintain the illusion 
thriving company. I don't even know what that looks like. Did they just take their money and pump it back through? Or were they actually doing illegal activity and taking that money and pumping it through? So That's crazy. Art, the article said, if I remember correctly, the article said that some of the family members would tape cash to their bodies, catch a flight overseas, deposit the money overseas, and then transfer it back to a bank in the U.S. That's My goodness. How they wow. That's crazy, right? <laughs> yeah, it's nuts. So number four, financial downfall. Eddie's attempt to take the company private in 1987 failed, leading to exposure and investigations. The new management discovered the $40 million inventory shortfall, which prompted bankruptcy and liquidation. We talked about the legal consequences again. Eddie was sentenced to seven years in prison and, and everything. And he tried to flee the country. Sammy was a rat. Yeah. In 1990, Sammy corroborated with law enforcement. And so they turned on Eddie and said he was the main culprit, the person driving the scheme. And so wow. now Eddie has a job with the law enforcement. Eddie or Sammy? Oh, Sammy has a job with law enforcement to catch these type of white collar crimes. Wow. Hey, that's funny to yeah. me because, like, I know there's been hackers and stuff. That yeah, I was just going to say the hacker. Yep. And then yep. the government was pretty good. It was a good job. <laughs> yeah. Can you come to work for us now? Yeah, exactly right. Not to be confused with Sammy the Bull either, folks. This is not the same Sammy. <laughs> All right. So, what, All right, so, so yeah. So, now what are, yes. Measures, what are, right? yep. What are the solutions? What are the prevention? Number one, strong oversight. All the time. Implementing strict oversight and controls could have deterred the Antars from engaging in fraudulent activities. So yep. I know that probably would have been difficult because they were the owners. owners and then me was the CFO. Yep. So he yep. kind of could have had everything directed to him. And some other oversight in this case could have been a third party yes. auditor or, if, group or something like that. But, think think about it and think about it in our case. I'm sorry. I just want close this here sorry think about it for like for us right we're business owners we're partners and we if we wanted to it's like you said third party if we wanted to keep each other honest and to make sure another now one of us get too tempted by the money we would have to have some type of third party auditor overseeing and checking us like hey guys i got the books and it'd be and it should be like a three-person meeting hey brian Excuse me, God. It should be a three-person meeting, and it should be like, hey, Brian, here are your withdrawals, and here are your expenditures. Walter, are you aware? And then vice mm -hmm. versa, right? It would be That would be the way to do it if you go into it on a new company and you want to make sure nobody, everybody stays honest, right? But yeah, yeah, this is the problem we see in these true payroll crimes is these freaking owners, they get so tempted. And I wanted to say it in, we did a true payroll crime for It's About Your Paycheck last week. And I thought about it then and I, the temptation came up, right? And I forgot to say it when the time was right, but it's temptation. When you're in a job or like you're in a job, a trusted situation, position at a job, or if you are at a company, or you're an owner, it's the temptation that will take you down every single time. Oh, and what did these folks say? And they, being honest, they got high off this, right? There was a, it was a rush to to steal, and that that you they will see a game. that you will see a lot as well in these stories and these movies. I watch nothing. I watch a lot of organized crime stuff, so it's a lot of the rush. They get the rush from the. It doesn't even matter how much money they make because if you do the math, a lot of these a lot of these people are making the same money if they just did a job. You know what I mean? But they're just living on their own terms. So that's really it, what it is. and Because you're right, because that is the crazy thing for me, because it's like their company was wildly successful, right? They went public yep. and made all this money. Yeah. It's just, you're already wealthy, like, why? What, you, like, what is it that you're doing? Yeah. Yeah, like, I don't know. There's legal ways to make great money. There's so many. But again, we, you just, we, exactly. We keep talking about it. I would love to, to discuss the psyche Someone mm -hmm. maybe has someone who who's into in that field, like neuroscience or something like that, and have them come and talk about it. Like what what triggers yeah. those actions in people? Even if their company is wildly successful, like Crazy Eddie's, mm -hmm. but they still do shady stuff. Yeah. What what yeah. prompts them to do that? 
it, that's just, yeah, I'm excited to know what makes the Lions do. That. It's yeah, you're right. And that, yeah, that's a whole nother conversation. You're right. We talked oh. about the inter- independent auditors. Another one is whistleblower protection, encouraging yeah. a co- culture that supports whistleblowing might have yep. led to earlier detection of fraudulent activities within the company. So Absolutely. who knows? I know we read earlier that it led to multiple arrests or multiple charges, right? So who knows who who else was in on the scheme that they hey, they were like, Hey, we know about it, but me as an employee, I'm like, Hey, my boss is paying me under the table too. Shoot. So he's so yeah. me up. Why should mm-hmm. I say anything? Yeah. That, and that's how people get caught up and that's how you make everybody complicit and whatnot. But if you're not involved and you come across these things, this is something that you should anonymously, that, you know, just because you're not, your job is, your job is going to go under, you may get arrested, you may get, you don't want to be a part of these things. If you're a part of it, then, you know, beware, be careful. It's not going to take you to any good places. But if you're like a payroll person and you come across this stuff and you're like, oh, crap, I think they're stealing. You, you should anonymously report it. Don't not from your cell phone. Go to a go to a pay phone if there's such a thing. Go to a land. Go to a hotel phone. Do something like just find a way to anonymously report it. The whole whistleblower deal. Number four, transparent corporate governance. So establishing transparent corporate governance structures and practices could have helped reduce the opportunities for fraud in the organization. And number five, regular external audits. Conducting regular external audits by reputable for firms could have exposed discrepancies and prevented the family from sustaining the fraud for an extended period. 18 yeah. years they committed, they did this fraud, bro. They, yeah, they did it on purpose. Like they yeah. would just, they're probably crooked out the gate. They were, unfortunately, and then they made a bad name, honestly, in New York for all of these small electronic places that kind of still existed in New York. Mm. They made a bad name for them. Like they were everywhere. Oh, that's probably shady. You don't want to go to that place. That looks like a crazy mm. Eddie situation. You know what I mean? Like they just made a bad name for them, and which kind of helped the advent of Best Buy, the Best Buys of it all. We used to have Circuit City in New York, too, and that went under. That's a, whole, that's a great business case if anybody likes business stuff. Like that's a go read about Circuit City. But yeah, that that's what that's what really lended credibility to these big box places because it was like Crazy Eddie is a sham. Now we know. Don't go to those small places, bro. Yeah, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. It's, and again, folks, it's the temptation. Stay away from that temptation. It's believe me, it's not worth it. It's not worth your job, your family. Have integrity. Have integrity. Have integrity. Yes, and, and have some sight, integrity. And if you find it, if you notice yourself being tempted. Then maybe you need to like don't do it. Come to Jesus moment or so. I don't know. Yeah. Just don't, don't do it. Do like it. Brian said, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. It but doesn't pay. Crime don't pay. I hate to say that. Maybe it's not the industry for you, but or something. Or you find yourself being tempted. The thing to, oh, to do yeah. is say, point point out the loopholes. Yes. Prevent yourself from doing it. That's right. How about that? Point it out. Point hey, it. this is a, this is a problem for our, this is a, forget the I can't think of the right fancy word but you call it out to your bosses hey this is a problem for us this is a, cha- a, a discrepancy have, i can't think of the word we have an opportunity, have an opportunity to, yeah to fix this our, yes we have yep. a loophole here that's right that's right so what'd you think about crazy eddie it was, it was crazy man i didn't know that happened did you know this happened with crazy, crazy eddie? yeah oh yeah oh yeah it was bro it was big again because it was such a big such a new york institution so when it all went down it was just like what the heck so that he had multiple locations or he had that one oh, yeah. crazy head. Oh, he nah, had multiple was, locations yeah. too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I thought it was a nationwide thing. When I was a kid at the time. I didn't, again, I didn't realize until I moved out of New York that it was only like a New York regional thing. You know what I mean? Mm, I'm sure it made national news back then. I would imagine so. Yes. With the millions of dollars involved. Um, I'm, now I'm just curious how many locations did... Crazy. Crazy Eddie. 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 So while Brian is doing that, I would, uh, we do have a safe topic. Safe 43. Topic. 43? 43 in four wow. states. Uh, and it was all Northeast. Six. Yep. All Northeast. Uh, Boston, so Philly, busy. Boston, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, New York. What's the quick bet here? It doesn't show me the so, other states. Bro, but they were like, 
So it was crazy, crazy Eddie's. Were they out there like Radio Shack? So they were going to be a, yes. eventually they could have probably grown to be a like yes. national a Best Buy bro. type deal. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And like you said, and yeah, they had a strong business. Like, why would you do this? But again, maybe their intent out the gate was to be shady. So that's why. Yeah. So yeah, let's get into our safe talk segment of this program. All right, so we're going to be addressing payroll fraud and how to balance employee trust and company security. So question, how can companies effectively balance the need for trust in their employees by implementing robust measures to prevent payroll fraud? How can companies effectively balance the need? What does this question really mean to you? What do you So think? for me... Same. And another way is like, how can companies ensure that their employees don't do anything shady okay. by having the proper measures in place? That's what it says okay. to me. Like, how can they ensure that they can trust their employees by saying, hey. Because it's trust but verify for sure. Yeah, and especially yes. in payroll. And it, it, like we said last week, is like in payroll, you have to be beyond reproach. Right? Yes, you, you cannot. You can't be any type of questionable, any type of... That's why I think when I read Ray Diallo's book, Principles, and he talks about radical transparency and radical honesty, it made so much sense. And I was already there as a professional and because that's how payroll people have to be. You don't want to raise any red flags with your bosses. You do payroll. You can't, you can't do payroll and then talk to your boss and be like, oh, yeah, I run a side hustle that involves like a scheme of some sort it doesn't even matter what it is like what you do what yeah. that you can't do that you know what i mean you, you shouldn't do it you I should, should. You, yeah fair thank you that that would raise a red flag to me if i have an a, a, somebody on my team that's even in even on the hr side with the data right you don't even have to be on the payroll side you can be just again in a trusted position and you data is data is money Right, people will pay for the data that we come across. If somebody's doing something questionable on my team, like in their side time, and I find out about, now it, it's a trust yeah. thing. Yeah, it's right. I gotta let you go. There's a thing with auditors, right? And this is this is the same way I think. Like with auditors, when they find one error, now it's how many more are there? Same thing. If I see that you grimy in one area of your life. How grimy you can you be in every area of your life? So exactly. it's, again, payroll professionals, HR professionals have to be beyond reproach. Yes. So it's tough. I think also what we have to do as payroll folks and trusted employees, don't get it, don't get offended if the company, are do, the company is doing things to audit you and to keep trust, but verify if they're doing the verification. You can't get offended. This is their business. This is a company. You should be part of that. Oh, wait, no, I have an idea for one. I have an idea for one. Then they know, oh, wow, this is okay. No doubt. It's pointed this out to us. So. What does that saying say behind you, bro? I see grace. That's the only word I see big. It says oh, grace. I took a, when I was cutting down the posters, it says, give yourself and others grace. Yes, grace. It's the grace. No doubt. So, yeah, you can give some grace for people like this right out the door. Uh, so gracefully... Send you let out me, the door. Let me gracefully, <laughs> let me gracefully fire you. <laughs> That's what I want. <laughs> Exit stage love. Yes. That way. Exactly. Exactly right, man. Yeah. That's it. What about you? Like, what, how do you think this, how does this play out for you? So, I think that you said it. You said basically you shouldn't get offended as an employee if your employer comes and says, hey, we're doing this to have preventive measures for ourselves. And to make sure that we can trust our employees and stuff in place. And then how you said, hey, they come to you and you have a suggestion. Oh, hey, also consider this. So, oh, mm -hmm. thank you. We weren't thinking about that. And that will establish that trust that it was trust, talking about in yeah. the question, right? Because yeah. we say it all the time. We said it multiple times throughout many of the episodes we have. I remember there came out for a demo with us. And he said, if you trust the people that work for you, they should not work for you. Exactly right. right. So if you can't trust them as an employer and you look at them at a corner of your eye and stuff like that, 
and you're always watching them, they shouldn't be working there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yep. facts. That can establish a culture of, oh, anybody can do what the hell they want here at this job. They're not, they're not going to get anybody in trouble. It could be the why, culture there, why? too. Yes. And that, and you know what? You make me think of something about something early on in my career. Where I was young. I used to do, we used to do appliance installations for Sears. That was like, I think my, what was my first job? First job on the books, I believe, was Wallbounds, which was a, is a grocery chain in New York. Publix, I think Publix, but it was a grocery store. But I remember thinking like, well, if they don't care, then I don't care. You know what I mean? It's, and, and that's not a good attitude because you should, and that's investing in yourself is caring. How you do anything is how you do everything. Yes. Right. So you, who cares what the leaders and the managers are going through? They may be on their way out. And that's yeah. happened to me many times in my career where I'm like, yo, what's wrong with this manager? And guess what? They leave. They go. Let me ask you this. As we get ready to close this episode, you think that an employer can do too much and put too much scrutiny sure. and too much pressure on the employee? Because I know yeah. that the, and the question is so. effectively balance. How can companies effectively oh, balance, balance yeah. the need? That's true. Yeah. So, yeah, that makes me think of two things. One, you could over-implement things that kind of create operational challenge. Now, okay, I can't even do my job because of all these measures. Silly. But you don't want to create so much friction that you can't even just, you can't even just normal operations. Normal, yeah. Hey, like, Brian, before you go to the bathroom, you need to let me know. <laughs> well, I can't. Don't leave, don't leave that chair until you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Wait, it made me think about something else too. I guess if you're, again, if you're unbalanced, like even if it's not stopping you operation and doing your job, but if you're like always just mistrusting and treat the way you treat the employee, that could also, that's toxic, that's right? It's like out. a, yes. it's like a level of, I don't trust you. I don't trust Then it's all, oh, man, this is not even a comfortable place to be anymore. You know what I mean? If you're always looking for that gotcha. If you're always yeah. looking for that. That yeah. Many people could be like, yes. how would you feel, Brian? Yeah. Your boss is like, gotcha. like always exactly. trying to catch you. Always. Like, yes. like oh, it's there. I'm not hiding anything. Like, yeah. Whatever. It will yes. make you feel as the employee. It will make you feel like this place. Yes, exactly right. Yeah, you're right. If it's out of balance, it could become an issue. Yeah. So, yeah, folks, I think that's it, right? Cool, man. That's a, that's a good one. It's a fun story. It's very nostalgic. Very, if you're an 80s baby, Northeast, you'll know for sure. But uh, just a, a quick takeaway for all of us is temptation. Avoid that temptation. Payroll pros, HR pros got to be beyond reproach. Yes. Yeah. If you see something, say something. Like they said in New York back after, you know, some things. If you see something, say something. So. Some employers out there have those whistleblower protections. I've heard stories of somebody being a whistleblower and the whistleblower is fired. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cause you, and then be smart. So good call out real, real quick. If you, if that's why I said, go through extra links to be anonymous because you never know. Oh yeah. It's anonymous. Like, no. Cause then you don't know who they know. And then they are not. Yeah. Bill, Bill from accounting said it, bro. Like what? It's supposed to be anonymous. Yeah. Yeah. Go through, go through some extra type of letter, no return address and just put it in the and, mail or something. And know who you can trust. Yes. Amongst your peers. That's right. That's because right. Some, some people, as we talked about this in earlier episode, and some yep. people love to play the game. And yes. so the, when they play the game. A lot game, of poli politics going on. Yep. They'll be like, oh. And they use it to their advantage. And if I tell a company that I know it was Walt that said something. Yes. Well, that makes me look good. I'm, you know, I'm from a company person, company guy. I'm a company girl, like whatever for the company. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly right. All right, <laughs> folks. That was dope. Yeah. Hope till next time. We love you. Peace. Before we sign off, here are a couple of quick things. Don't forget to follow It's About Payroll on LinkedIn and It's About Your Paycheck on Facebook and TikTok. Thank you for being a part of our payroll community and thank you for being a part of this journey with us. Until next time, keep learning, keep growing, 
And most importantly, keep going.